Hi there, my name's Elaine McCaskill and I'm the Core P Woodland Manager. I stay just outside Loch Inver, but I haven't always lived in the area. We'd been looking at options for moving up to the family croft near Loch Inver when the position for Core P Assistant Development Manager came up. And in fact, it was the deciding factor in making the decision to move into the area. For two and a half years, I worked with Richard Williams and Fiona Saywell to develop the overall core project and secure funding from the National Heritage Lottery Fund and other funders for its delivery. And I was delighted when I got the role of Woodland Manager. There are approximately 60,000 hectares of land within the core P boundary, about half of which is owned or managed by core P partners. But only 4,000 hectares, less than 7% of the land, is mapped as woodland in a survey called the Native Woodland Survey for Scotland. And as such, the area is perceived as a mostly treeless landscape. But on closer inspection, individual and small clo clusters of trees are clinging on throughout the area, but in particular around the coast and on steeper slopes. You can see from this map where existing woodland is and where there's potential to expand woodland and to join up habitats and create corridors for wildlife, which are essential for biodiversity and a fully functioning ecosystem. Our desk research revealed that there, were, there was plenty of plantable land within the call area, but Scottish Government grants for woodland expansion were not being taken up. So we looked at why this was the case. During the period 1992 to 2005, Following the revised Crofter Forestry Act and new government planting schemes, the Core P area saw 1,600 hectares of new native woodland planting, mainly on common grazings. These had varying degrees of success, and in the decades that followed, changes to the woodland establishment policy and one or two other influencing factors resulted in native woodland planting schemes not being promoted as widely, and native woodland planting rates within the Core area stopped. During the development phase of this core project, we identified the barriers to accessing planting grants with the cost of establishment exceeding the grant, especially for smaller schemes. The relative remoteness of the project area also meant that contractors and materials had to travel further, leading to increasing cost. On larger areas of land, for example, common grazings, where scale is not such a big issue, cash flow was a major problem. Common grazing committees typically have no means of funding establishment costs until such a time as the grants are received, which can take several months. Securing a bank loan against grant payments to relieve cash flow issues was and remains very difficult without being able to offer some form of security. Very few common grazing committees have assets that can be used to secure a loan and few, if any, individual shareholders are willing to offer up their own houses as security and securing agents and woodland advice is generally expensive. All of these barriers combined with the mixed success of earlier croft woodland planting schemes meant that croft woodlands were viewed as a difficult option at the start of this project. The project aimed to overcome these barriers to woodland expansion and to aid the expansion of native woodland better protect and enhance existing native woodland and to connect woodland fragments. Our offer to local people and the reason why they might want to establish woodlands under the Core P project banner was practical land management advice and assistance, for example, shelter wood creation, financial benefits, so expensive agent fees, contract and cash flow management, potential income through carbon offsets and wood fuel, environmental benefits, the creation of habitats with their associated biodiversity benefits. The offer was open to all in the call area. The Woodland Expansion Project had measurable objectives too. 200 hectares of new native woodland planted, two designated woodlands into recovering condition, 250 hectares of woodland brought back into active management, 20 land managers, crofters engaged, and 75 volunteer days. We aim to engage with as many people as possible and spend project funds as local as possible. Our budget was, has been a million pounds, which sounds large, but actually doesn't go very far when deer fencing is required. We therefore tried to be innovative to make the budget go further. We tried to minimise the amount of fencing where required and included the removal of redundant deer fences.
What has happened to overcome the barriers to woodland management and expansion in the call area? Well, we've been able to offer everything from the initial project discussion through to land registration, grant applications, tendering, offering of contracts for works, management of works on the ground, any associated paperwork, including grant claims and subsequent maintenance and management of all the financial side of the works. This has really helped remove the burden for landowners unfamiliar with navigating the grant system. We've also had a very excellent deer fencing, tree planting and maintenance contractor based in Lochinba, working with his local team who know the area and are able to come up with creative solutions. Being based in the area and getting to know people has really helped. One of the hallmarks of this project, and for me, one of the most enjoyable elements, was working with such a wide diversity of local people with varying motivations for expanding woodland. It has been a pleasure and rewarding to support them to realise their ambitions. In the next few slides, I'm going to give you a flavour of the variety of native woodland planting schemes CORP has supported over the last five years. Our first project enclosed 150 hectares of land, including five and a half hectares of existing mixed conifer woodland around Glencanis Lodge and seven and a half hectares of existing native woodland. We dismantled two kilometres of old deer fence within its boundary and removed seven hectares of gorse, which was a challenge. We planted 100 hectares of new native woodland and 14 fruit trees along the path which runs through the woodland from Solven. Drum Swardlin lies on the eastern shore of the loch with views of Solven. Claire, chair of Ascent Foundation, is pictured here amongst some of the trees. This is one of two large schemes planted in Ascent Foundation land, the other being at Ledmore Junction. At Ledbeg, within a 350 hectare enclosure, we've planted 160 hectares of new native woodland bounding with Camlock Triple SI on one side, with native woodland as one of its designated features and included nat including native woodland remnants within the boundary, which are already seeing regeneration. This planting scheme was able to offer access to carbon income, which was fed back to Ascent Foundation to support their ecological management aims. Elsewhere in Ascent Foundation land, we are also assisting with felling and redesigning of the Glencanis mixed woodland around the lodge, which has been blowing over for some years now. We're also helping towards writing a moorland management plan as they move towards more cohesive land management across the community owned estates. In Akaltibui, a Takaduit, Ian had taken an apportionment of six hectares and he was keen to join up an area of coastal oak rainforest with previously planted areas around the houses that act do it. This planting is right on the coast, subject to all the climate here can throw at it. But it's doing brilliantly. This image is of the coastal oakwood we included within the scheme boundary. I wasn't expecting to see the oak and aspen regenerate so quickly, but its response to reduce deer and sheep browsing has been incredible. It's thriving and walking through a regenerating slice of Scotland's rail rainforest is a real treat. Two fields separately owned, fenced as one enclosure, expanding riparian woodland to join the woodland around Kirkton of Ascent House and Inchnadamp Hostel. Jane Matheson is the Lochinver preschool teacher and so we brought the preschool out to help kickstart the planting here. These trees were only planted three years ago and are already doing very well. With alluvial soils, the fields are very fertile. The local tree nursery also grows understory species, species such as thistle, primrose, honeysuckle and a few bluebells from seed collected locally, which Jane has also planted out amongst the trees to ensure a full woodland ecosystem develops as the woodland grows. At Aknakarnin, we've helped Murray and Carolina plant 1.1 hectares of new native woodland on an inn by Croft to create shelter in a highly exposed location. The shelter created will help the owners with a polygrub erection. A polygrub is a very strong polytunnel designed in Shetland. The woodland planted will create shelter for bees, hens, pigs, etc. to supplement their income. 
25 orchard trees have also been planted to date, with a few more fruit trees planned this autumn. Down the coast slightly to store, Sue and Willie Jack were keen to increase shelter and biodiversity. So two hectares of new native woodland has been planted over two years on Imbai Croft land within an existing deer fence. JMT volunteers who came to the area regularly pre-COVID helped to plant, fertilise and place mulch mats around the trees with vole guards. The croft is very exposed, but it's fertile ground, so the trees should establish well. Akfry included about 0.7 hectares of 50 year old conifer plantation that was starting to blow. With the ethos of the core project being to spend money as locally as possible, we teamed up with and supported Lockbroom Wood Fuels, a social enterprise based in Ullapur, through training and purchase of suitable equipment for felling of this woodland. It took longer than bringing in an outside contractor to fell but it did produce firewood and clear the area, allowing it to be replanted with native species along with additional areas within the fence boundary. It was part of the acronym for Forestry Cooperation Area, the first area to progress. This forestry cooperation planting is still in progress, consisting of four landowners working together to join up areas of previously planted woodland, managed together and also providing stock shelter. Close to the Akulti buoy turning off the A835 lies Tealithian Door, where Nigel and Merrill car stay. We assisted them arranging a lease of land from Ascent Foundation, upon which they've created two woodland areas of around five and a half hectares in total to create shelter, connect existing areas of woodland and remnant trees, and designed in stock fencing so that once the woodland is established, they have shelter for their flock. Nigel is a regular volunteer at the local tree nursery and Merrill has just retired from Nature Scott. They have both been actively involved in this woodland development and planting and taken great pleasure in planting trees here. In Ackleti Bui at Pole Glass, we upgraded a stock fence to deer height and planted a hectare of woodland between the road and Una's house to create shelter and improve bird life. A few apple trees have also been planted only two years old and the trees are doing well despite the exposure. Where possible, existing woodlands have been included within the applications to be brought back into management and protected from deer damage. These works aren't currently supported well by the standard forestry grants and so the additional core project funding has been essential. One particular large project has been on community owned land at Little Ascent. Kulak Community Woodland Trust bought two thirds of a woodland planted in 2002. The other third was bought by a private owner with different deer management objectives. A successful application to Wren allowed the erection of an internal deer fence, which included most of the woodland within CCWT's ownership. An ongoing supported deer management programme continues. An additional planting, including understory species, have, has also been included, with more planting planned this autumn. We're currently undertaking a programme of fixed point photography to monitor the pro progress of this woodland, which is now seeing some of the regeneration recover well. We're also assisting with a long-term forest plan, which includes the leased grounds at Kulag Woods by Lochinver Village. Once approved, this will allow CCWT to access public access and native woodland grants to support path and woodland works for the next five years. The tree nursery owned by SWT and based at Little Assen on Kula Community Woodland Trust land just outside Loch Inver, has been a brilliant source of trees for the various planting projects and it's a good starting point for the kids participating in the outdoor and woodland learning project, a place where they can see and touch seeds, saplings, before taking the trees out and planting them themselves. The woodland project assisted with a grant application for a new polytunnel at the tree nursery. This is now in place and has helped the tree nursery increase its capacity and support the woodland project by having more trees from a local seed source and more trees grown locally, therefore reducing the road miles and carbon emissions, but more importantly, producing planting stock that is suitable and resilient to the rather inclement weather that we can be subject to. Trees of local provenance stand a much better chance of survival here. 
From this table, you can see that we have exceeded the native woodland planting target. We're working on the designated woodlands target and have exceeded targets for woodlands brought back into active management and people, numbers of people engaged in the project. Sadly, COVID has affected the volunteering opportunities available. But with the project running up to December and with much still to do, we hope to increase the number of volunteer days. This map shows the geographical spread of the woodland expansion and other projects across the Cool area. We've achieved much, but there are still huge opportunities out there. And we hope more people will think about woodland expansion in future. And in fact, we have surveyed and worked up approximately 1,000 hectares of additional new planting possibilities, almost ready for forestry grant submission. I will be staying on in my role as Woodland Manager with Woodland Trust and look forward to continuing to increase the woodland cover in the Core P project area. Of course, the project had its fair share of challenges and it's important to reflect on these two. We shouldn't underestimate how much administration is involved and how scary forestry grant schemes and carbon contracts can be. It was a major barrier for our audience, but having someone local that can take the land managers through what can appear to be a complex series of processes has made a real difference to the number of people entering into these agreements. Knowing that Woodland Trust Stroke Core will manage the maintenance period, which is until at least 2031, and ensuring trees will get to a contract standard as a minimum is, reass is the reassurance land managers needed. As stated earlier, the startup costs of planting were prohibitive, so having the NLHF monies to top up costs has been invaluable and crucial to the success of the project as have local contractors who care about the woodland expansion and live locally. All of the projects, with the exception of Leadbeg, required top-up funding from NLHF and other funders to get started, revealing the financial challenges of woodland expansion in this particular area. To all the funders who contributed, I'd like to say a huge thanks on behalf of everyone who has planted. Without you, we would not have enjoyed such positive outcomes. So that was a quick run through. Thank you very much for listening.